I know you guys are thinking right now, uh, can we see lion's teeth? Yeah, we can see lion's teeth. You guys ready? Yeah. Sharp rays of sunlight crept up from the horizon, casting a golden radiance across the savanna. Morning has arrived in South Africa, and with it, the beginning of a journey that was soon to become one of the greatest animal encounters I have ever had. Today we are venturing out into the world-renowned Karika Game Reserve. This wild place spans over 10,000 hectares, and the landscape is a splendor unlike anything you have ever seen. Endless rolling grasslands, the perfect habitat to safely house and keep hidden one of our planet's most iconic predators, the African lion. All right, Coyote, about ready to hop in the Jeep? Yeah, well, the plan today is to track down a pride of lions, but trust me, it's much easier said than done. We've got a lot of ground to cover. You guys ready to track down the pride? Let's find those big cats. Here we go. Tracking lions on foot could take days, if not weeks. So the crew and I teamed up with a secondary team composed of field veterinarians that had been deployed through support of the Reserve Protection Agency. Led by Dr. Waldo Dreyer, their collective goal from a scientific perspective was to safely tranquilize one of the larger resident males in an attempt to collect biometric data. This important research would help ensure the health and well-being of the pride. So with the plan in place, we parted ways and headed toward opposite ends of the reserve to begin our search for the pride. I feel like luck is on our side today. A lot of ground to explore, but we got two teams out. Uh, just a matter of tracking down the pride. Since 2004, Karika has been home to a very healthy population of lions. Yet finding and getting these big cats in front of the cameras would be no easy feat as they are constantly on the move and in search of their next meal. Got an ostrich way off in the distance there. Ah, so much open space. And with that open space, the pride could wander out out of any one of these clumps of bushes. Really gonna be tough to find these cats. Got some zebras over here. That looks like good prey. As a lion, zebra steak would sound pretty good. Wait, what's this? Oh, I got something cool. Follow me. Look at this. That is a perfect wildebeest skull. And if ever I have seen evidence of a lion kill, this would be it. Look at that. Right at the back of the neck, where the head connects to the neck right there is all snapped off. Wow, well this is obviously ancient at this point. No skin or flesh on it, but, yep, likely fell victim to a lion. All right, guys, let's keep searching. Yeah, I'll check this out. You know what that is? Bones. Bones, skin, fur. That's a zebra's leg right there. And zebra's legs don't just fall off on their own. That is absolute crystal clear evidence of a lion kill. It's old though, this is not fresh. So we do know that the pride has been through here, but not recently. All right, well, this is, like I said, gonna be tough to find this pride of lions. Stronger evidence of the pride and their whereabouts was necessary if we hoped to have an encounter. So we loaded back into the Land Cruiser and continued our search deeper into the interior of the reserve. Finding tracks is the most reliable sign in one's quest for locating an animal. And you are always guaranteed to find the freshest tracks near water. Check this out, guys. Completely fresh lion track right there. Like most cats, they try to avoid walking in the water. And the cat definitely moved up the side of the road here. That means we are hot on the Pride's trail. 
So Joe, what'd you hear? There's literally lions on top of this hill. So the um, other team's got eyes on the lions? Yeah, yeah. And they're on a kill. So really? Yeah. Coyote! Yeah. Coyote, the other team's got the lions over the hill. What? Yeah, the lions are just over the hill and they're on a kill too. On a kill? Yep. No way! Okay, yeah, hop up in the jeep. Oh. oh man, this is gonna be crazy. They're on a kill? Yeah. All right, guys, well, I'm out there picking up pieces of old kills and apparently the lions have a kill. The other team has spotted them. We're gonna make our way over there now. Here comes the lion episode. Awesome! With lions located on a fresh kill, we quickly moved across the reserve to meet up with a vet team. Dr. Waldo joined our vehicle, which would give us a clear view of the tranquilization process. So with the darts locked and loaded, it was go time. This is exciting. I've never seen a lion in the wild before. I know you guys are amped. Oh man, this is gonna be one epic day. Tranquilizing a lion is considered a routine checkup. Once asleep, the biometric data will be collected and then a reversal serum will be administered for the animal to wake up. Okay, they just radioed from up ahead. The lions are just up over the top of this next hill here. We have found them. All right, guys, we are rolling up on the lions right now. I can actually see one of the big males right here off the side of the vehicle. Wow. So impressive. We're trying to be really quiet right now. We don't want to startle them. Believe it or not, we don't want to scare the lions. I'm the one that should be scared right now. Oh, there it is. There it is. As our land cruiser approached through the flowing savanna grasses, my heart began to race at an incredible speed. This was an unprecedented level of danger, which meant everything had to go right, because if it didn't, that meant everything had gone horribly wrong. Never before had I seen a pride of lions in the wild. As they came into view, their primal strength and beauty was a wonder to behold. In total, four lions have been spotted on the fallen carcass. Our primary target was the male, but the team decided that they also wanted to check the health of the females. So if the opportunity presented itself, they would be darted as well. And in that split second, that seemed to slow down in time, we all clung to the edge of our seats with focused anticipation. Oh, got one, got one. Nice shot. Wow, you seem to spring into action like that. that was... Okay, we thought that maybe the lions would move up when we darted one. We've got four lions, three females, and a young male. It's a young male, right? Yep. Wow, still an enormous cat. Second dart. Here we go. We got the male coming up around the back side here. Right, the upper, the forefront of her chest. Go, 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 go. No, not yet, not yet. Okay, the male's coming around the front. The females almost have a clear shot. Super windy though, it could throw out the dart. Do not want to hit the animal in the face. Here comes the shot. Got him! All right, the male has been darted. One lion left. Wow, okay, we have three of the lions started at this point male and two females. One female still does not have a dart in her though, so we're trying to move the vehicle to get in a better position. This is intense. Hold on, guys. Be aware, you got a line. Here we go, look at this, good shot. Zoom in, zoom in. Got it. All lions have been darted. 
And they are all staring at us now saying, okay, uh, what are you guys doing out here? Wow, that's intimidating. All four lines With all four cats successfully darted, we watched from a safe distance as one by one, they succumbed to the effects of the tranquilizer serum. All right, now it's just gonna take a few minutes for the tranquilizer to set in. It'll tell us to get out of the vehicles, we'll move in, get that biometric data. Wow, my heart's racing right now, how about you? This is crazy. Time was of the essence, so the vet team needed to move quickly. This meant that as a camera team, we would have a very limited window of time to capture an up-close presentation with these sleeping carnivores. Given his iconic stature, I was beyond excited to showcase the male. While in the background, the veterinarians would be collecting the sought-after biometric data from the females. In human terms, this procedure is comparable to a checkup at the doctor. When it comes to lions, this includes pulling a small hair sample from the tail, checking body length, paw length, overall health, and lastly, microchip identification. That is a big cat right there. Look at that. Got this other female down right here. Hey, there's just lions laying around everywhere. There's lions everywhere. Keep in mind, guys, these lions are just asleep. None of these animals are actually hurt. Here it is. Here's the male. That is unbelievable right there. This is the closest I have ever been to a wild apex predator of this size. Oh, you can feel it breathing. Ah, oh, beautiful animal. How this creature is enormous and it is still a sub-adult male lion. I want to come on this side just to show you this paw. You've got the mane. You can see its face is covered up there. It is asleep. Look at the size of this animal's paws. It's bigger than my hand. That is crazy and so heavy. So much weight and so much muscle in the front section of this cat. You guys want to see those claws, don't you? Oh, yeah. Ready for this? Hold on, let me kind of sit down here. Get ready. That is impressive right there. And these claws are constantly growing throughout the course of the animal's life. Now, like all cats, they have four toes up front, but also a dew claw on the side. You see that? Wow. That is the key piece of power right there, because when they lunge toward a water buffalo or a wildebeest, and they latch on, it's this claw that hooks in place and makes sure that that prey does not get away. And that's what they do, latch on and then go for the neck. Now the lion, believe it or not, does not have that powerful of a bite force as compared to other big cats. Only somewhere between 600 and 900 pounds per square inch. But what they wanna do is go for the trachea. You get the trachea, you're cutting off the windpipe and that animal's gonna suffocate. Now the males, while they can hunt, aren't the ones that are actually hunting. So while when we came up on this pride, you see that they've taken down an impala, it's likely the females that killed the impala, but then the males will come in and they will feast first. Wow, this cat is just the coolest creature I have ever been around. Let's take a look at its head real quick. Look at the size of the ears, massive ears. They're capable of moving these individually. They have incredible sense of hearing. Look at the mane of this animal. It's so dense and oh, it smells like South Africa. It smells like the savanna, a little bit of grass and a little bit of sand. Now you look at this mane and you think, well, what is the purpose of a mane on a lion other than to have an epic hairdo? And the purpose is actually to protect them when they're fighting to protect territory. All this dense fur, when another male is rearing up using its claws and its teeth, protects this lion's throat and its face. All right, you guys ready for the reveal? Let's see it. Okay, I'm gonna pull this back very slowly. Let's see the lion's face. There you are, buddy. Oh my gosh, that is incredible. What a handsome animal right there. Look at its whiskers, incredibly dense. I know you guys are thinking right now, uh, can we see the lion's teeth? Yeah, we can see the lion's teeth. You guys ready? Yep. I'm gonna slowly just kind of pull the lip back here a little bit. Wow. Whoa. Look at those canines. Holy smokes. Unbelievable. Now lions have three types of teeth. Up front here you have these incisors. 
which are used to carry things. The females will carry their cubs around. They're also used to pull meat away from the bones. Of course, the canines are used to inflict a kill. And then in the back here, go ahead and zoom in. You see that? All these premolars are used like serrated shears to saw through the meat. And I can see the lion's tongue in there. It's incredibly grippy, like sandpaper. They can actually use that tongue to lick meat away from bones. They can lick fur off, and believe it or not, if a lion were to lick your skin, it would take the skin right off. Not exactly like your house cat. Wow, hi buddy. Let's see, I'm just gonna kinda take a look at his eye there. See if we can zoom in there. See the pupils are slightly dilated. It's completely out right now. See that, get a tight shot there. The lions have incredible eyesight, not only during the day, but also at night. Look how big its head is compared it's to you. Massive. It's as big as your body. Can you imagine what it would be like to get an appendage of your body or your head stuck in the mouth of an animal like this? And keep in mind, guys, this is still a sub-adult. They get bigger than this. I'm guessing this line's probably somewhere between 250 and 300 pounds. They can tip the scales well over 500. Okay, I'm gonna just flip this back up over its head so that the sun stays out of his eyes. Oh man, is your adrenaline rushing as fast as mine is? I'm just trying to stay calm, actually. <laughs> okay, we ready to collect the biometric data? All right, let's do it. Got to get the measurements on this lion. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go all the way to the to the back side here. Okay. So I've got 123 and a half. Okay. What do you have there? Uh, 54. 54. Okay. Uh, Paw measurements. Uh, six. And this is important data for us to know. Eight. Exactly the size of this lion's paws. So if they're out there and, and five. Looking for tracks, so you'd know exactly which line this is. You see all these kind of markings on the face. Mm -hmm. Also, over time, will help you identify the individuals. It's been quite a striking one, right here. Yeah. So let's work the guy up. I think he's there already too. All right, guys. What's really cool is that this lion doesn't actually have a microchip in it. So we are going to get to insert one today and that will allow us to keep a tight record of this animal anytime that they then tranquilize in the future to be able to collect its biometric data. Wow, cool. All right, so where do you insert the microchip? Okay, yeah, so the microchip is a nice thick needle. Mm -hmm. about the size of a, Ooh. Like a grain of rice. So I, don't, I don't like needles. <laughs> I don't do very well with needles. So we insert it right in the middle between the shoulder, shoulder blades. Okay. So we just make a little tint of the skin. Okay. And put it underneath the skin. Ooh, just a little prick, right? And it goes, boom, just like that. All right, guys, well, it's time to apply the reversal drug so that this male wakes up and heads back off into the wild. But this certainly was epic. Getting to explore here at the Karika Game Reserve, tranquilizing four lions, getting up close to collect biometric data. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, time to wake up. Yeah, just keep it in the muscle and push the plunger back a bit as soon as you can. All right, guys, Lion's about to wake up. Let's head back to the trucks. Yeah. Woo. Man, that was amazing. Woo. That was cool. That was cool. All right, Cody, what's happening right now? We have administered the reversal drug, and now we are just safely back in the vehicle waiting for the Lions to wake up. I've got a GoPro positioned just in front of this female. We've got zoom lenses in on the male. Uh, the ones up here underneath the bush, we're gonna also keep an eye on them. And in just a few minutes here, they're gonna pop back up and disappear into the underbrush. are beginning to wake up. This lioness right here in front of us is starting to move. It's been about 15 minutes. Sounds about right. Since the dawn of mankind, we have feared that which is capable of hunting us. So much so that we in turn chose to hunt many of these natural predators to the brink of extinction. The lion, 
is no exception. Today our mindset has changed, and fear has been replaced with love and protection for these incredible beasts. Several hours after the vet procedure had concluded, we returned to the hilltop and checked in on the pride. Our hope was that they would still be in the area, allowing us to get a final glimpse of these beautiful cats. Then suddenly, in what seemed like a moment slowed in time, the king of the savanna materialized from the underbrush. He stepped into the golden glow of the setting sun and moved with an elegance that defined him as the ruler of this land. And as we watched, our cameras all fighting to capture the moments as they played out before us, it was not difficult to pull my eye away from the viewfinder so that I could appreciate all of the beauty in this animal with my own two eyes. I know that I will never forget my time spent alongside that sleeping giant, my fingers placed upon its massive teeth, the moment it woke back from its slumber, and the sight as it strolled along through the flowing grasses staking claim as king of the savanna. If you enjoyed this encounter, make sure to go back and watch as we get the cameras up close with some of the planet's most fascinating animals. And don't forget, subscribe and click the notification bell so you can join me and the crew on our next wild adventure.